Hello and welcome to the next episode of the TNC podcast. Now, I am beyond excited to get stuck into this yellow and green exclusive today. This has been three years in the making. That's how long I've been pestering Nelson for. Of course, 70 appearances for Norwich City, 20 goals, a fierce forward who took no prisoners. Da, da, da. Nelson Oliveira. Nelson Oliveira. <laughs> <laughs> you still it. How are you, my friend? How are you? How are you? Nice, nice for the for the welcome. Um, well, I have to say that it was three years waiting, but I I didn't saw for the first two. I think I after I saw your message, I forgot to text you back, and now I saw it again, and I say, oh, I have to give I have to give this one because. Because it's, it's also a club that I that I respect so much, fans that I respect so much, um, and I respect you so much also. So I had to give this one, and sorry for the delay. <laughs> That's okay. The Norwich fans have been ready and waiting, and um, we're really excited to be hearing from you today, mate. We've heard lots of rumours, lots of hearsay, lots of stories from one side of the of the table and today we'll, we'll be getting stuck into yours. I think Nelson, the best way we can start this conversation is by turning back time and taking you back to the beginning. So we signed you from Benfica in 2016. Um, obviously a, a brave move for, for you potentially to come from that club to Norwich City. What were your first few days like at, at the football club? What were your first impressions of Norwich City? Uh, was it was a good one, to be honest. I, I remember to 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 be very welcomed by the by the the most experienced lads. Let's say Russ was was amazing for, with me since the beginning. Wes, Cameron, Jerome also received me really well. Uh, was the same position as me, but he received me really well. Uh, and obviously, Alex Neil, the manager, was was very important for uh, for me to to. To feel welcome uh, at Norris. So I remember very well the first days were, were amazing. I'm going to ask you about Alex Neil in a minute, but there is one man particularly that I want to highlight, and and I'm surprised you didn't mention him. This man, Evo also, Pinto. Yes, I, I, I forgot, to be honest. So sorry to Evo, I forgot. He also received me really well, him and his wife. Not uh, I'm, I just mentioned the, the other ones because Evo, I knew. That he will receive me well because he's Portuguese. Is uh, I knew him before, not so well, but I knew him. Uh, so was not a surprise that uh, that as a good Portuguese fella, he will receive me nice. We went for dinner straight away uh, with the wives, um, and it was was really a, a a very big help in in the beginning and and during all my all my stay at at Norwich. I mentioned the, the other three fellas because I didn't expect nothing from them. I didn't know them, and they were uh, they were uh, let's say uh, big names in the dressing room. They were the not oldest because I don't like to use this word because they were not old, but Experience. they were they were the experienced guys in in the dressing room, and they received me really really well. What did Evo tell you, Nelson? So. It... It must be really nice having someone that obviously speaks the same language as you. We've uh, currently at Norwich City, we've got some Brazilian lads, for example, and you know it must really help them. And so for yourself, obviously coming in and having a fellow Portuguese fella, as you say, in Evo Pinto, it must have been quite comforting for you. And, and what did Evo tell you about the club? Because um, we, we vividly remember Evo Pinto saying pitch war, yellow army, and all of this stuff. But what was he like, and, and what did he tell you about the football club? Uh, he told me good things. He, he had the experience in the Premier League, what was nice, but end up uh, um, relegated. So, sportive side was not the best, but uh, uh, he said from the beginning that it was was like a family in Norwich, uh, and I could I could uh, see with my eyes that it was true. Uh, Norwich City was was a big family. I st I still believe that is a big family now, but when I was there, it was a big family. Uh, a really welcome club, a uh, warm club, let's say, with amazing atmosphere in the in Cairo Road. So, was he only tell me nice things, but most important that was true, was true what he was telling. So, I was I was experienced all of that uh, in the in the next days, and 
was true. That is amazing to hear. Good old Evo Pinto. And the invite is there, Evo. I still want you on the podcast, my friend. Maybe Nelson, <laughs> Nelson, will, Nelson will encourage you. Um, you. We mentioned him already, Alex Neal, Nelson, obviously the, the, the gaffer in time that brought you to the football club. What were the initial conversations between yourself and, and Alex Neal? And what was he like as a, as a manager to, to work under? Well, he had a personality really, really tough, tough, but kind of at the same time, let's say. He was not uh, in the beginning. I remember to, to arrive. He, obviously, we spoke uh, on the phone. He, he welcomed me. He showed how much he wants me to, to be at Norwich City. But when I met him, I said, look, he's a strong, a strong fella, let's say, uh, a strong personality. But at the same time, he was really kind. So people may, may have the idea that he was like this guy all the time uh, with a, a closed face, let's say. But he was a really, a really nice guy, a really nice heart, at least with me. I believe also with the, with, with the others and with everyone. And I only have a good thing to say about him. Good coach and good person. Nelson, before you came on today, I um, did all my research. Obviously, I've tracked back through all of the interviews and stuff. And, and I, when I listened to Alex Neal and um, when the press had asked him, you know, who's this Nelson Oliveira guy that we're going to sign? And he was so full of compliments, but it almost sounded like he couldn't believe it. He was like, he can do everything. He's from Benfica. He's a number nine. And it was almost like he couldn't believe that you were going to sign for the football club. So I find it interesting to think that, he was being really nice there, but when he met you, he was like the tough guy to work with. That's that, that's quite a fascinating one. Yeah, yeah, he was he, like I said, he could uh, from the beginning. He welcomed me really well. He, I could see in him that he really wants me because sometimes you move to a football club, some people want you. Sometimes the manager don't really want you, but they sign you anyway. Uh, to be honest, I, ne I never felt this, this experience in my career, but I know that some guys feel this and uh, this happened in football. With Alex Neal, I could feel from the, from the first minute that he really wants me. He was really happy for me to join uh, Norwich City and this play a big part, helped me from the beginning to feel more, more uh, let's say, I'm a confident guy, to be honest. Uh, but... Uh, this helped me even to be more confident, to feel more, uh, more adapt to the, because I was only one year in England and uh, it's not so easy to, I was a young, a young lad. With, I remember when I signed for Norwich, I had maybe 25, 24, let's say, something like this. Yeah. So it was really important to, his, his behavior with, with me. And that was very obvious, Nelson, because in your first season, it's really safe to say you hit the ground running, we say in England. I don't even remember that phrase. You just smashed it straight away. 15 goals in 32 games in, in your first season. You quickly became a, a fan favourite. We, we were singing your, your chant from the stands. What was that first season like for you at Norwich City? Did you feel like it was the beginning of something really special for you? To be honest, to be honest, yes. To be honest, I think it was uh, was a great feeling, a great season. Uh, only the only thing I, I re regret in this season is not to get uh, is not to get promoted because I think I believe that uh, we really had team to to be promoted. We had the quality to be promoted. Just didn't didn't work out in some games. We had a, a bad run. Let's say I remember near the end a little bit a uh, bad run um but uh but was all the rest was was amazing was i i remember i had so much joy to play in car road i'm saying this not not like uh to to say it because it's beautiful and i have to say it, it was it was really true i i remember i walked i i lived maybe in the same building as evil and it was like uh 100 meters from Carroll Road, 150. So in the day of the games, we used to walk uh, with uh, with track suit because in my first season we, we put the track suit to play at home. Yeah. And I used I used to feel fuck it. This is nice stadium to play. I just walk out. I take my breakfast. I walk out of the door. 100 meters. I will play in this full stadium. Amazing pitch. Was was 
very good times to be honest. Living, living the dream, my friend. And yes. can, can, if there was, a, if there was a moment, if there was a game in that season that you went, oh, cool. Do you know what? That was my favorite game. That was my favorite goal. What, what would it be? What was your favorite goal for for, for Norwich City? Because I mean, the, the, there's there's loads that stand out for me, but the one that really stands out for me um, is is when we played Wolves away, and it was I think. I think it was an equaliser, if I'm right in saying. We played in that purple kit. You hit it from like 50 million miles out. Um, yeah. That was my favourite goal. But but what was your favourite goal for Norwich City? No, this, this one was a good goal was because it was uh, in the end. No one expects me to to shoot uh, this ball. Maybe John expects because he played with me. You know, I had I had a good kick, let's say. Uh, not to praise myself, but I, I had a good kick. Uh, and I remember at the time everyone was saying that uh, John could could have done more, uh, but it was a, a difficult ball also for him because kick right in front of him and was with a with a lot of power. But I think my favorite goal for Norwich City was against Aston Villa. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember this game really well at Carrow Road. It was an important game because we we started a good run of games. I started to play because in the beginning I didn't play often like let's say from the beginning because i just arrived cameron cameron was doing well he's yeah. also a good player experienced player i had to wait my time and i remember i played uh, for the for the cup a good game against everton yeah uh, and from then from then i start to play more and uh, and my first let's say really good game uh, I, I scored uh, with Brentford at, at Car Road, but after yeah. I scored, I scored uh, against Aston Villa uh, a good goal, a good goal left left foot. Like uh, the goalkeeper didn't expect me to shoot because I he had a defender in front of him, and I put the ball on, on the to- on the bottom corner, and uh, and the stadium go wild. We win one zero. Aston Villa at the time was also a team to to get promoted, a strong mm-hmm. team. So if I had to choose one goal, I would choose this one. And, and I'm surprised you've not mentioned your hat trick against Derby County as well. It was also good, a good, a good day, a good day. But this hat trick, I will tell you the truth. This hat trick cool. make me really happy because it was in the beginning of the year, and I say, well, I start the year amazing, perfect. From now until the end of the season, I will score 20 goals. And after next game, I got red carded throughout the run, and I said, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> One guy I don't remember the name, and Alex Neil got crazy with me. Did he? What, we, did we, we, what did he say? Yeah, what did be, because say? we draw, we draw this game, and this game was really important. And I remember in a corner, uh, the defender. Uh, one experienced guy, I don't remember the name, but these guys that all the time they push you, they grab you, they hit you. Yeah. And uh, in a corner, he grabbed my heel and push it really hard. And I make with the hand, I I just uh, make this for him to to leave. And he make a, a spectacle like, a, and I got red card. And I remember I, I, I was so, so down because I start one week ago, I start really well the, the year, score a trick against Derby County. And, one week later, I took, uh, I think I took two or three games the ban. And this is why I, I didn't mention this hat trick. I didn't even remember. Well, and, and what did Alex Neal say, Nelson? I'm, uh, have you heard of what a quote called the hairdryer treatment? Did, did, he, did he shout at you in the, in the changing room? No, not really. He didn't okay. shout because when he was angry, he was not shouting too much. But the next day in, uh, in the training centre, I remember he called me and he, he said, I couldn't, I couldn't behave like this. I let the team down. Uh, I explained him also my point. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and yes, it was the first time that uh, <laughs> it was funny because I was down in in both sides in in a sportive way and also financial way because they find me two weeks salary oh, did they? And, uh, and i thought this only happened in a football manager <laughs> when, when, where you have the option to to put uh, uh find him two weeks salary find one week salary <laughs> and that's i realized well england england is really football so, manager is, is based on on uh, how it <laughs> happened in in english football and i remember also then I, I got uh, 
really helped by by Russ. Yes. Because I was really angry. I said, uh, "Okay, the guy grabbed my ear. I touch him, and I got red card. I take two or three games. I don't remember. I take two weeks salary. I think it's too much." And Russ helped me, and uh, and uh, they reduced it for for one week salary. Still, but was Still was annoying. a nice help, and the Russ was was uh, was really on my side. I will I will stick with the gaffer. Don't worry. I will I will sort this out. Good. And uh, and uh, was was that the story? That, but to that. tell you, my my goal against Aston Villa was the best. <laughs> was, okay, I love that. I love that. And, and you mentioned Russ, and we'll go on to talk about him. And um, well, one of the the features that we have on on this podcast, Nelson, is we we love to go through your best Norwich City eleven from one to eleven, from the goalkeeper to the forward line. I want to I want you to construct. If you're the manager, Nelson Oliveira, the manager of Norwich City. Who would you play in your in your in your Norwich City starting eleven? So I, I guess we we have to start in goal. So who are you going for in goal? My big John John Ruddy. Also because okay, I will I will choose based on on football and also uh, human side. And for me, John Ed Wood was a, a really good goalkeeper, uh, like he showed also in Wolves uh, uh, some seasons after. Uh, and also really nice guy, nice guy. Did you, did you feel bad when you scored that world class goal against him when you played for Norwich and he was he was there? Did you feel bad? To be honest, I didn't feel so bad because uh, I didn't even think about this because I was. I remember I was a little bit angry because I was on the bench this game. I enter and I scored uh, the okay. draw in the end. And uh, okay, my second season was. Was a bit. Uh, I was a bit disappointing in many ways. So, so I didn't. To be honest, in that goal, I didn't talk about uh, John. Maybe I talk later. Oh, I... John! Fuck! It should be other goalkeeper because. <laughs> but uh, in the moment, I didn't. I didn't talk about John. Well, Nelson, you'll you'll be pleased to know another thing we do on this podcast when we when we interview a guest, we always reach out to their former teammates and we ask them what they were like behind the scenes and you know give us a reference of his character and what he was like in the changing room and stuff. And John Ruddy replied and he said, Nelson Nelson, what I would say about him is that he was very fiery, but very, very talented. Never found consistency in Norwich, which is a shame because he should have been the main man with his ability. Lovely guy all round. So what's your reaction to, to John Ruddy's words there? What what he said at the beginning was fire fire. He said you're fiery, which means like you're a bit you you know you're passionate, you're almost a bit angry. That's oh what yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think he he, he characterizes uh, well. I'm I'm like this and uh and I feel, I feel happy for his words. For me, I think also he's right. I think uh, with my abilities, I, I could and I should have done more for 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 Norwich City. I try to give my best, but mm. I think I had the quality to, to to do much more, uh, like I show like I showed in my in my first season. Uh, but yeah, I think I think is is a good word he said about me, and thank you to to John. I'll we'll be sure to send this on to to John. Don't you worry, Nelson. And um, so let's talk about your defence now, Nelson. Let, let's fly through the defence. Obviously, you have to have Evo. You have to have your mate Evo in there, don't you? But who else is yes. in your defence? Evo, Evo, Russ, and two more. Evo, uh, I think I will go for for Ben Godfrey. Because yes. he's a really nice, a really nice kid, to make a partnership with Russ, because Russ is, is more uh, the thinking guy in, in the in this duo, yeah. and Ben is is more the the fast guy, the aggressive guy. I think I, they will I, make I, a a good partnership. Yeah. Uh, and for left back, I think I will put. Um, well, there is two that could be, Olsen. That was a really nice guy and nice player. Awesome, but I yeah. think but I think I will go for Robbie Brady. Nice Robbie fella. Brady, yes. Nice, nice fella, nice guy, amazing player. I think uh, another guy that could have done more mm. than what he did because he had a lot of a lot of ability. 
uh, okay, he did well because in the end, uh, Norris sold him for a, for a good fee to, to Burnley, I think, if I remember yeah. well. Uh, but was a really, a really nice player. Nice player and really, really funny guy. Really funny guy. I love that. And you mentioned, you mentioned Russ Nelson. So um, I've got a quote from, from the Norfolk Cafu, Skip, as you might have called him, the captain at the time. He also sent me, well, actually, he actually sent me a voice message because he said so much. So I've written down as much as I can. He said, Nelson Oliveira, where do I start? Probably one of my favourite people I've ever played with. So much ability, so talented, two-footed, strong as a beast, quick, he had everything. I really felt for him after his injury and everything. And um, for someone that he he's someone at the at the football club that needed more love. And if he had got that love, he would have been incredible. If he'd made to be feel like the main man, he would have been next level. He's had a brilliant career though. And as a fella, I loved him to bits. Such a good guy that was easily misunderstood because he really cared and he was really passionate and emotional. Please send him my love and regards. There you go. Uh, what a message. You almost make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really Russ. nice message. Really nice message from, from Russ. Um, I knew, I knew, I knew he appreciate me a lot because since my, my first day, um, since my first day in Norwich, he realized uh, is why he's a top manager and is why he will be a top manager because mm. apart to be a, apart from be a, a good footballer he had a, a brain and the and the and the personality that he, he really he really he quick realized what the, the players need what all the players are what they need to perform well and uh, and from the beginning he realized that uh, that I was a guy that needed this this love, this uh, <laughs> this warm to to make me feel, to make me express my my qualities, to make me to make my football fly, let's say. And um, and from the beginning, he was he was keen on 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 transmit this to me. He all the time he he say these kind these kind of things to me. So it's not a surprise what he what he said to you because I think. I knew that uh, that he 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 seems is like that, but it's always really nice to to hear because uh, because to hear these words from from a guy like Russ, with the career that he had, with the with the personality that he has, always make you feel proud. Well, and I'm sorry to almost make you cry, but I'll, I'll maybe make you laugh now, Nelson. Though, to me, it looks like you might need to do a DNA test because I think you could be brothers. Well, if you say this to him, he will be angry. He will be angry because 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 he used to say that he is better looking than me, man. But uh, <laughs> yes, in, in this picture, in this picture, we are we are similar. Yes, we look uh, we look quite quite similar. Oh, we love it. We love it. Okay, we've done goalkeeper. We've done defenders. Let's move up to midfield. So, who's in your midfield, Nelson? Talk me through it. In the midfield, uh, I will put one player that. Uh, I really love him as a player, as a person also, but as a player it was was a joy to watch, to train, to play. That it's called Graham Dorans. Gra Graham, I didn't expect you to say that. Okay, talk me it, through that. Yeah, many play, many people don't don't uh, don't uh, expect that, and I think that as a fan, with with all the respect, you see things that uh, sometimes. Sometimes you think, oh, this player is good. But if you train with him every day, if you see the ability that he has every day, maybe you change your opinion and you would say, he's not good, he's very good, he's top. Yeah. And uh, Doza, I think, is one of these guys. Doza is, was one guy with so much ability, both footed, quality of pass, was like uh, with a control. Control, <laughs> yeah. Was, was, uh, was amazing to play with him. Uh, and. Uh, I used to enjoy a lot to play to play with him. Him and Johnny Olsen, I think, will make my my two midfielders. Okay, okay. Uh, Johnny also good guy, good player, a leader, uh, aggressive guy, run a lot, good yeah. legs to to because I will put three talent three talent players in front of them. 
that don't don't run too much so i need this guy too okay 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 i love that <laughs> who, who, who are your wingers who are you going for out wide i will play with three guys in front of uh, of these two midfielders that uh, not 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 wingers they all can change um, oh, yeah love it love it yes so i think i will put alex pritchard wes olahan and james madison <laughs> Too much, now, uh, too much, too much technique in these three guys. That's I tell you what, you've you've picked out some talent there. Too much, uh, too much quality. A, a player that, that that we don't hear a lot about, I guess, from in terms of like the behind the scenes, Nelson, because we've not had that much of an opportunity. Is James Madison? Everyone talks about how amazing Wes was, and we know that Alex Pritchard was. Um, was one of those players that had that raw ability, but couldn't quite get it get it to the next level when he obviously moved on to Huddersfield. But James Madison, the guy behind the scenes, did did you know that he was going to reach the heights that he's reached now? Well, I can tell you, with all, it's true what I will tell you. I was the first the first guy, maybe, uh, to believe in in James Madison, he, and you can ask him. If you had the opportunity to talk with him, okay. he will say that. I think even today he respects me. Uh, he's a he's a big star now, but he still respects me as a, as a big brother because from the beginning I remember he, he come he come from Aberdeen. He was on loan. Yeah. And when I see this kid play in training, I said, "Wow!" And I used to I told him because he was not sure that he was going to stay. Alex Neil. Uh, we had James, we had Alex Pritchard in his position. We had Wes also, uh, and I told him from the beginning, there is space for all of you, for all of you, and you will not leave because, kid, you are an amazing player. I, I used, uh, I remember to tell him this, exactly like this. You are, you are an amazing player. You don't, I think you don't even realize how good you are. Yeah. And uh, he started the preseason. He started uh, really well uh, with uh, with Daniel Farke. He scored one free kick, one amazing free kick in one friendly. I remember. Yeah. And from there, and from there, he he just he just developed uh, his his amazing talent. He is. But uh, but he's, uh, he's, uh, he's an amazing player. I think uh, everyone could see it, or maybe the the people that like like more football. Also, me and Rust, we have this connection because. Apart to be to be people that uh, go well with each other really well, me and Russ. Yeah. We also had this passion for football to to talk about football, to talk about uh, who is good, who plays good, who don't play good. And Russ, man. Russ, Russ likes a lot to to talk about football, and me also. And I remember to talk with uh, with Russ also about uh, Madison. And uh, to be honest, from the beginning, I thought this guy is different. Top, yeah, top player. And I put these three. I put these three players because they they have the three the same uh, brain football brain mentality. Let's say they they think football yeah. the same way. These short passes, this this technique, uh, yes. this technique game. And Wes is the master of of all of the, all of them because with the experience he had, he was also amazing, uh, amazing guy, funny guy. Him and Robbie Brady used to be a, a joy to watch in the dressing room and yeah. on the pitch, but also on the dressing room. So it was was amazing. So good times, man. Nelson, we, we have to talk about Wesley himself. Obviously, there an image. Clearly, you two got on like a house on fire, which is which is great to see. And honestly, Nelson, Wes is really difficult to get to do any sort of media. He doesn't really say he's a he's a man of few words, is Wes. But when I said Nelson Oliveira was coming on the podcast, boof, SA message came through. Okay. So Wesley himself said to me, he was an absolute pleasure to play with. His movement was so good. And when he got anywhere inside the box, his finishing was so deadly with both feet. Always remember the Fulham game, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, where we both came off the bench and he made a great run inside the centre half. And I managed to pick him out and he smashed it into the corner. And then the celebration afterwards, I think he showed how passionate he was for the game and Norwich City Football Club. A great guy in the, in the dressing room. I see he's doing great now after a few bad injuries, which is great to see. He is a top man. This pass, man. This pass was uh, with the 
how you say you know the magician this uh, uh did they have to do the magic a magic trick yeah yes this was a, a i don't know i i didn't i don't even today i don't know how we put the ball there because i made the run but okay i made the run because i, I thought that it was west that had the ball if maybe as is another guy i didn't make this run yeah. because i know west is capable but the ball was right in front of me like uh, like he put with the hand like he's boom. magic isn't he he's magic, just magic, magic. amazing and, amazing and a great guy as well a great guy and um, Nelson, I, th I think we're more or less at the point where we, we can't avoid the elephant in the room, as we say in, in England, any longer, which is that Fulham game. Of course, before the Fulham game, you had, in my opinion, a very, very good pre-season. Five goals in eight games. It was looking so good. Then the Fulham game came along. But before we get your response... Here was the fan reaction to you scoring away at Fulham. So pretty evident that the Norwich fans loved it. We loved you when you scored. But, of course, there was another side to the story that day. So, I think the easiest thing for me to do, Nelson, is just to shut up and let you talk. What actually happened that day from start to finish? Because you weren't selected to start. And, obviously, that's where that day started to unfold. So, in your own words, what happened away at Fulham? To be honest, uh, is a, is a nice... It's a nice opportunity to to me to to talk about this, and uh, maybe it will be the first time since this happened to that I will talk about this. Uh, thank you also to give me this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I, I will I will never speak uh, bad or 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 something wrong about the club, about the people that were that were working with me in in the time, uh, because I love I love Norwich City too much to. To do that, uh, but I also have to give my my version of what happened and uh, and why I I make this let's say unthinking uh, attitude. Mm. What I regret because first of all I would like to to say that was a, a bad attitude. Let's say in terms of uh, I show passion and uh, I think uh, everyone could see that I cared about score for for Norwich City. Uh, and all of that, but at the same time, I do respect a little bit uh, the uh, the coach, and uh, um, and that is never is never a good a good attitude uh, for a, for a football player. So for that, I I regret. But what what was the truth is that uh, after my first season in Norwich City, I was really happy in the club. I was really happy. I gained my my space, let's say, in the club. I become a, a fan favorite. Uh, I like the city. My wife, my my wife, used to love to 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 live in Norwich. Was closer to London. Not we go often to London. Everything was was perfect. And after uh, Stuart to ever come, uh, Daniel Fark come. And I felt straight away from the beginning that uh, something was wrong because uh, I remember in the pre-season in the hotel, uh, my agent called me and said that uh, that uh, Norris was was ready to accept uh, an offer from uh, from Reading from Yapstam because Yapstam really want me. Yeah. Uh, and they was they were ready to to accept an offer of around seven million pounds seven million pounds to. To go to Reading. Reading had been um, in the playoff final the, the season before. I I scored against Reading one or two goals the season before. Uh, so yep, some really appreciate me and want to sign me. And to be honest, I took this really really bad because I said to my agent, I'm I'm fine here. Norwich City is a club that uh, that fight against Reading, let's say, and against other rivals. To get promoted, to to go to the Premier League, I have I have a good 
everything is good here. My salary is good. I like to be here. Uh, I like the fans. I like to play for this club. Everything is good. Why to accept to, to sell me to mm. a rival? Why? Something is wrong. Or they don't want me here. Or the, the coach don't have other ideas for his game uh, and don't want me. What was really strange after my first season, I, I was maybe one of the best players in, in my first season in, in the team. Yeah. And, and this hit me really, really, really bad, really deep. And, um, and I remember uh, to, to be a bit angry with that. But mm -hmm. okay, I continue, I score goals in preseason. And after come the, 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 first, uh, the first game, and I went to the bench with all respect to, to Cameron because Cameron knows I always respect him. Yes, uh, because he, he welcomed you, etc. Yeah, he will be in my in my best eleven. I will put yeah, because yeah, yeah. everything because he was the top player. He was uh, he have done so much for Norris. He mm -hmm. also was really nice with me. He was a really nice guy. But at the time, I didn't deserve to to go to the bench, and I was feeling that they were treating me. Unexpected bad. Just mm. because came a new a new sporting director that maybe was not him that signed me, came a new coach that was not him that signed me. Yeah. And they were not let's say honest with me from the beginning. I, I used to prefer to, to come to me and say, look, the club needs money, uh, and we we think it's a good bid to sell you to Reading. But they didn't. Okay. They didn't, didn't go to you. Yeah, they didn't go. They didn't go. And I remember I, when uh, my agent came with this offer, I said to, to, to him straight away, I will not move to Reading. If I move mm -hmm. from Norwich, I will move to Premier League. I will not move to a club that I think uh, I'm better in this club than I will be yeah. in Reading. Why, why to move if, if, I'm, Nor if yeah. I'm in Norwich City? If I'm in Norwich City with, with ambition to go Premier League, why to move to another club that maybe have the same ambition or even less ambition? I don't know. Because I yeah. didn't know, I didn't know Reading, and I don't want to disrespect Reading because of I course. also play. Of the course. life, the life make me play in Reading after the, after the few seasons it was fun, yes. and and I have so much love for Reading. Also, the fans received me really well there. Yeah. I had six months with up and down there, but I was really enjoying these six months. It was nothing against Reading. It was just against the people that were accepting something. That mm -hmm. I was really disappointing with that. And uh, in the end, I didn't left. I had this game against against Fulham, and uh, I I think this game was like uh, you know when when the glass is going full, 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 full. Yeah. And after in the in the end, uh, the water goes out, explode, and uh, and I remember to be on the bench. <sighs> I was not thinking to make this celebration. I was not because this is something that comes out of thinking, just comes, boom. And uh, but I remember to be on the warm up really, really angry. I say if I enter, I will eat all these guys, man. I will eat all of them because I was really angry to to show to show that I I I wanted to play. I I, I you know yeah. and. And this end up being against me because I enter with all this, all this fire. Let's say all this, like Russell say, I'm an emotional guy. I'm a, I'm not a guy that to wait. If I have something to say, I say it. I don't wait to say it tomorrow, or I will not say it after one week. I, I'm really direct. As some people interp interpret that in a bad way, saying that maybe I'm not well educated. Maybe I think it's not that. Everyone is different, and. Uh, yeah. That just because I did this attitude, attitude, this doesn't show my character. This you're doesn't show me. Right. You're passionate. It's, you wanted to prove a point. The thing, the exactly. thing, the thing that I, I agree with you, Nelson, on on all of that, and um, and I can see the side of the argument where it it was maybe a little bit disrespectful towards towards Daniel Farker because because not because you pointed to your name on your shirt. I actually was all. I was actually like. I actually quite like a bit of passion. I, I thought that was superb that you were just like, no, 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 this is me. This is what I do. But when I watched back the video, Nelson, what I was blown away by and how I really understood how angry you were that day is that you went back again and again. You really wanted to show your shirt, to Daniel Farker, to the point where 
The players on the bench were pushing you onto the field of play. The players on the field were bringing you back and you just kept wanting to go to Daniel Farkas. So you really were angry that day, weren't you? I was angry because uh, I don't like when people, uh, let's say, push me to, to make me angry. Mm. And I was feeling that the club was make, trying to make me angry because I didn't want to go to Reading. Right. They wanted to like say, okay, you don't want, okay, the first game you will go to the bench for you to see that you are not so important. Mm. Uh, or you, you know, and I didn't, in my opinion, with all respect for everyone, like I said, I respect everyone and I'm not here to, I will never criticize or Daniel Park or Stuart Weber or the club. I'm not, I don't have the right to do that. And I don't want to, to do that because I like Norwich. Yeah, I really when, for example, now when you were showing all these videos, all these make me such a good feeling. I had a good time in Norwich. I really like, you know, and uh, and I don't want to criticize, but I was really disappointing. And uh, and this make me make me add this this attitude. Uh, so this is this is what I don't get, Nelson. Right. So you can explain this to me because we've heard from Wes, from Russ. From Ruddy, these are experienced, really well respected North City legends in their in their own right. And then here's what I don't get. Daniel Farker then says in, in various different pieces of press that there, there wasn't a problem between you. He said he's Portuguese, he's very emotional, he's a good guy, good character for sure. Sometimes emotions burn a little bit in him, but we have no problems. I'm content with him. He then said in another one, the club isn't um, the club is bigger than one single person. I genuinely believe this. Each and every player, member of staff, head coach has to be thankful and be allowed to work for this club. So to me, that almost insinuates that he said you had an attitude problem and you didn't want to play for Norwich. But what I don't understand, Nelson, is I, I know these Norwich players, right? They're legends and they wouldn't lie to me. Like they loved you. They knew how much, how passionate you were to, to win and, and score goals. And so I don't understand how I just don't, I don't get it. Explain it to me. Uh, this, this I cannot explain. Something that I was not me that say that was him. Maybe him, he has to explain. But what I can tell you, that is not true at all. I, I always play, I always play for Norwich with, uh, with uh, passion, with, uh, will to to win but yeah. but i have to be honest also that sometimes the people that are in charge make you enjoy more or less play for a football club and in Rah. my second season i was not enjoying for to to play to play under this coach i was not enjoying to 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 be there if you ask me after all of this i didn't want to be in norwich not because of norwich but because uh, okay yeah, because the rest, what I don't want to criticize, I don't want to say uh, because of him or because of him or because of him, but was nothing against Norwich, was nothing against the fans, especially yeah. because he was really, 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 uh, let's say they they were double faced with me, you know. Yeah. First of yeah. all, they accept. First of all, they accept uh, uh, a bid from Reading. Wanted they wanted to okay this guy go, and after five the first five games even from the bench i scored two or three goals i remember and i went i was called up for the national team and in, in the last day of the market i had an offer to go to swansea 12 millions they beat to 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 norwich you can see it's public it's, yeah. it's everywhere it was true you can ask the club it was true and i had a call i was in national team and i had a call from daniel farke saying you cannot leave you are so much important. You are the guy that scored all our goals. I cannot let you go. When one month ago or one month uh, something, he accepts a bid to go to Reading, to the yeah. same league, competing against uh, against Norwich. So that in my head didn't make any. Was like a, yeah. but, but, was uh, like a confusion, too much yeah. confusion. And uh, I, and uh, and after, of course, after they accept. After they accept the bid from Reading, after they put me on the bench, like, uh, let's say, not to punish, because I don't want to say that, because also Cameron is allowed to play and have the quality to play. 
I'm not saying, okay, I go to the bench and the guy that play is not good. No, it's not true. Cameron is a good player. Yes. And he deserves also to play. But at that moment, I thought I deserve to I deserve to 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 play more. And I felt as a punish they put me on the bench. Yeah. And after this, <laughs> and after this, uh, and after this, they accept. Uh, they didn't let me go when yeah. I wanted to go because after all of this, I wanted to go. I said, okay, you don't want me here, no problem. I have the chance now to go to Premier League, no problem. The club receive money, get well compensated, twelve million, the double that they pay for me. I think it's fair. And I go to to play Premier League. That was maybe my my dream. Uh, is in my opinion, is the best league in the world. And I wanted to to do that. Also, that they cut a little bit my 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 legs, let's say, and didn't want didn't let me go. And so, to resume that, everything starts bad from the beginning with uh, with them. I don't know why. I cannot find an explanation why. Maybe maybe. He didn't like me. He has the right to, to don't like me because not everyone likes everyone. But uh, I felt they were not uh, they were not fair. Uh, but, Nelson, sorry to interrupt you, mate. But, but just explain this then, right? So so now you've said, but Daniel Farker phones you and says, you know, you're important. We, we I want to play you, but but then he freezes you out of the squad and you have to play for the under 23s, which I believe yeah. at the time Russ is all is also put in there. Tom Tribal is put in there as well. Uh, this uh, is what this is what this is what this is what this is what I I I felt, you know. Uh, it was a guy that when I did this to him, he took it person. He said he said that I I'm a guy that uh, that sometimes my emotions uh, burn burn on myself and all these kind of things. But um, I'm a guy that maybe I do this in the moment, but after I'm okay and I don't criticize and I if I shake my hand, uh, let's say for example I love Russ, I can have maybe an argument an argument in the training with him. Uh, he kick me, I kick him. I I come in the dressing room, I will be the first to go. Russ, sorry. Uh, yes was uh was my my mistake or this and daniel park i think with me he played me all this season because he didn't have other option and mm -hmm. as, as soon as he could as he could put me on the side you he there. really put me on the side like uh i remember in in my third season i was i was more than able to play and i could not even even uh train with the team sometimes Sometimes I had, I had to wait uh, I had to wait them to have the meeting in the dressing room and I was waiting in the gym them to come out of the meeting and after to go for training with all of them and uh, and in my opinion I I didn't I didn't deserve to be treated like that but I I have no no regrets or not uh, I don't feel bad because what I what I had in Norwich the, what I lived in Norwich is bigger than that and i will not uh, say okay because of that i don't want to hear anymore against uh, about norwich i don't want to no i want to hear because i really like norwich i like the stadium i like the fans i like the city i like the people i have really good uh, memories uh, about uh, norwich and uh, it's not this that will make me forget all these good moments you know so uh, we, we could, and we will go on for, for, for longer, Nelson. And we'll, we'll have to do a part two on Norwich City at some stage. So basically, you fall out of Daniel Farker, you get frozen out of the team, you then end up on loan, don't you? And you go on loan for, at first to, to, to Reading, don't you? And, and I want to ask you about um, about something there. Um, Tyrone Mings, um, he he caught you quite badly in, in, in your face when you were playing for, for Reading on loan. And and that was quite bad at the time. I remember seeing a quote from you, something like you thought you were going to be blinded or something. It was quite bad, wasn't it? Was that scary? Yeah, it was bad because, uh, and I think it was a little bit uh, this that make me want to, to to go from England because I had after Reading, I had uh, many chances to to stay in England uh, yeah. in Championship, not in Prem, but in Championship, I had many offers. Right, uh, but. Uh, 
I was disappointing with English football because what happened? Uh, it was, in my opinion, he can say whatever he wants, but he didn't on, on purpose. And the players, the guys that play football, know. Maybe the fans know, but the guys that play that are on the field know that he could avoid easily, because we see everything on the pitch. We see where we put our legs. We mm. see where we put our 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 feet, and he could avoid this. But because you have this, uh, let's say, dirtiest way of, of playing, mm. he didn't avoid it. And he, he, he stamped on my face like he did before with the Ibrahimovic. was not by case that uh, one yes, player, player stamped stamp in the face of two, of two guys. I, I don't remember any other player to stamp in the face of two guys. Maybe he's really unlucky to stamp uh, in the face of two guys. He mm. must be really unlucky. So I think uh, he did. He did. He meant, he meant to do it, and I was disappointing because uh, nothing happened. He, he was not red card, he was not fall, he, was, he didn't get any punishment, and he could be serious. First, thanks by God, I only have some scars, but I could be maybe, he could, I could get blind, I could stop my career. Yeah. And I, I just want to, to ask one question, if it would be this to, to Harry Kane, to to Marcus Rashford, to to some English player, let's say British player, it will be the same treatment. It will be the same. Nothing will happen to him. I, the, FA, the, the FA will not do nothing. The mm. the Feder English Federation will not do nothing. I don't believe, you know. I don't believe, and this is what make me make make me angry about about this situation. But I no regrets again. Not bad feelings again because. I'm healthy, thanks of thanks, thanks God. I'm healthy, and it's just some scars. And after and, one week, I was I was playing and scoring. And well, one yeah, week. and 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 you say that, and it was almost there was a bit of a poetic end to this story, wasn't there, Nelson? Because of course, Mings was at Villa at the time, but was a former Ipswich player. So the Ipswich fans, of course, rivals with Norwich City, were enjoying the fact that he'd hurt you. And I just want to remind you of. Um, how this story ends, Nelson, because you actually then played for Reading against Ipswich at Portman Road. And um, it's safe to say they got their comeuppance. Take a look at this. <laughs> Mate, that must have been how satisfying was that moment for you? Yeah, it was it was good because because I was I was hearing them singing this and uh, and I I had in my mind, okay, wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. And and, uh, uh, and it was felt good because also they were angry with me because the year before I play for Norwich, I said uh, before the game that Norwich was a bigger club, and in my opinion, still a bigger club than uh, Ipswich. And uh, and they were angry. I remember at the time they insult me. They say you don't know our story. I don't even want to know. I still believe that Norwich for me is bigger than Ipswich, since I. Since I, I see football, I see Norris much more times in Premier League, much more times in, in a, even now he's in, he's in a higher league than Ipswich. So I still believe that uh, that Norris is bigger than Ipswich. So and they got angry at the time with that, and after they they think that no regrets again, no no bad feelings, uh, good luck for them, but better luck for Norris. <laughs> Nelson, do, do you know? You kind of scare me a little bit because you're not scared by anything, are you? Because you, you got really close to those Ipswich fans. Like, you were right up against them, like, literally shouting in their face. Like, you just don't care, do you? Yeah, because when I think when you have this adrenaline, when you have this uh, feeling from with the game, sometimes you don't think about the dangers. Maybe, maybe if I was calm, I, I didn't go there. I was afraid. But in that time, I feel like... Uh, Nothing can touch me. 
it, they could, yeah. but I feel like this. It was honestly on behalf of the Norwich fans. Thank you for that for that moment. I really appreciate that, Nelson. And I guess now I'd like to invite you to have the opportunity to address the, the Norwich City fans, Nelson, because as you say, it's the first time you're you know speaking to a Norwich City channel since 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 you've left the club. And you know what is your message to the to the Norwich City fans? Well, my my first message is uh, to show my gratitude for uh, for the the time I was there. Uh, it's not every player that have the privilege to 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 see their name singing in in, in a stadium like Carrow Carrow Road. So first of all, really really grateful, really thankful to to all Norwich City fans. Um, for for my time at Norris and for the love they they all they they all sent to me. Uh, second of all, to what I wish them is nothing but uh, all the best. Uh, Playing Premier League, I think uh, Norris City and Norris City fans, especially, are a Premier League uh, level. So so this is what I wish to them to to keep supporting the team like they do. I remember, I don't know if they if they did already, but at my in my time they were planning to 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 make Carrow Road b- bigger because there was people waiting to 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 buy season ticket to, yeah. to watch to watch Norwich City. I don't know if it's still like this. Yes. But I believe still. So so this shows how how much they love the club, how much they support the club. And uh, I wish them to continue like this because with all their uh, their uh, their love and their their support, they they will put Norwich where uh, where it belongs. That is in Premier League. Nelson, that is all we've got time for today, my friend. I am so grateful, and behalf, on behalf of all the Norwich City fans, I'm so privileged to be talking to you today. Thank you for trusting Talk Norwich City, and thanks for telling your side of the story. I really really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for all of you Norwich City fans tuning in worldwide. Of course, if you have enjoyed this episode with Nelson Oliveira, let us know on social media at Talk Norwich City. Give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, thumbs up on YouTube and all that stuff. What did you think? Let us know. We want to hear Nelson Oliveira. What a guest he was. Finally, Nelson, there's one thing left to say. What's that? On the ball, City. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 